promise that every time you see Tupac, you see a real human being. You will see my ups and my downs. I was raised in this society, so there's no way you can expect me to be a perfect person because I was raised in, you know, H-E-L-L. So I don't even want nobody to sweat me for that. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. That's how I feel. I'm going to do whatever I like. Certainly. Tupac Shakur is widely considered to be one of the most influential rappers of all time. His legacy and influence still continues to live on, inspiring generations of young musicians. Tupac went to prison in 1995. While some of his fans might have been disenchanted by his legal troubles and jail time, there was one high-profile fan, Jim Carrey, who did what he could to keep Tupac's spirits up including writing humorous letters to the rapper while he was incarcerated. Tupac's time in prison was highly publicized, with many people raging about the rapper's sentence, and others demanding that he should be set free earlier. Jim Carrey was one of the rapper's supporters. He is a comedian who became famous for his elastic expressions and outrageous comedy routines. Carrey was a budding celebrity in 1995, following a string of roles in popular movies like The Mask and Dumb and Dumber. According to E! Online, Carey and Tupac had strong mutual respect, and following Tupac's incarceration, Carey decided to try to cheer him up by writing letters to him. According to a 2017 report, Carey believed that the charges against Tupac were unsupported, and wanted to do what he could try to make the rapper feel better. It is not known whether Carey and Tupac spent time together after the rapper was released from prison in the fall of 1995, but it is certain that Tupac appreciated the comedian's support. Sadly, Tupac was killed in a shooting in 1996, less than a year after he got out of prison. Ultimately, although Carey and Tupac could not seem more different, the two were able to establish a strong connection during a difficult time in Tupac's life. Yo YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. I'm back off vacation, man. For most of the month of December, and so far all of January, I've been relaxing. I've been cooling out. I've been trying to get revigorated, re-energized, and re-motivated. I'm back. The vacation is over. Let's get into this video, shall we? 1995, when the alleged Tupac rape case first went down, you had a lot of people that were very skeptical that didn't necessarily believe the charges that Mr. Shakur was being hit with. A lot of hip hop heads, people on the streets, people in the courtrooms. I believe the DA, I believe the judge, and I believe maybe the NYC police department didn't necessarily believe that Tupac actually raped this young lady. That's why the charges were dropped to something a lot smaller. They changed the language because they couldn't, you know, they couldn't make the big all words stick. So they changed the language and got Tupac on something else. But you know who else didn't believe these accusations against Tupac? Entertainers. Because they know what the life is like of an entertainer. <laughs> you know, they know people throw themselves at entertainers all day long. And for an entertainer to physically have to force himself on anyone is a strange and far-fetched dynamic. But that's a discussion for a later date. This video here is solely about, about Jim Curry and Tupac's unusual relationship. I mean, a lot of celebrities, you know, didn't believe what Tupac was up against. 
and they couldn't believe what Tupac was up against. And people like Tony Danza, of course, Jasmine Guy, all of these people wrote Tupac. And, you know, it's been publicized, the relationship they had with Tupac. But Tupac and Jim Curry is one that somehow got swept under the rug. And the reason why I'm doing this video today is because Tupac really loved Jim Curry. He loved his work. People would tell me, and I've heard this several times, that Jim Curry was Tupac's favorite comedian. Straight up. I don't know if Tupac got a chance to tell Jim Curry that. I don't know that somebody else tell Jim Curry that. And I don't know the time Tupac actually did a guest appearance on In Living Color. Did he get a chance to actually meet Jim Curry and tell him that? But needless to say, Jim Curry had to be a fan of Tupac as well. To take time out of his day and write Tupac several letters, meaning more than one. He wrote Tupac on more than one occasion just to try to put a smile on Tupac's face. I thought that was dope. I think that's deep. And I think it deserves more of a discussion. Why did Jim Curry reach out to Tupac? What did he say to Tupac? You know, um, and did Tupac get a chance to holler at Jim Curry once he was released from prison later on in 1995? These are questions that I know I have never heard the answer to that I often wondered. I'm like, I know Tupac wanted to meet with Tony Danza when he got released. It was quite a few other people that Tupac had ran in, that got in contact with Tupac while he was serving his time at Rikers Island. And once he stepped foot on the ground as a free man, he wanted to meet these people, shake their hands, look them in their eyes, and probably just to say thank you. Did Pac have that moment with Jim Curry? You know what's wild? Everybody said Tupac had a great sense of humor. I wonder in the near future, could you see Pac and Jim Curry doing like some collaboration type of stuff? Like, you know, um, maybe a movie, maybe another television appearance somewhere. <laughs> or maybe Pac could have had his man Jim Curry on a album, maybe doing a skit. Who knows, man? We'll never know the answer to some of these questions, but sometimes it's just good to think about it and have a discussion. Anyway, don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, it's been a pleasure as always. I'm your homie Gab. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the peace.